Hello everybody, my name is Zampier Beep, and welcome back. Today we are finally going to be talking about Phase 2 and the far future. This has long been a requested video topic, and I'm excited to be finally getting onto it. Thank you for all your feedback on the previous video. Hopefully I don't have any more internet outage issues in the future, and I still do have quite a few topics to cover. Feel free to drop any topic suggestions if you want to hear anything covered in the future. Other than that, feel free to join our Discord server. The link is down in the description below. We have a lot of really cool discussion on transit, housing policy, Sentinel-2 updates, and even land use policy. So if any of that interests you, feel free to join. Now with that out of the way, let's get started with today's Sentinel-2 updates. On the left is November 2nd, and on the right is November 22nd. So you can see we're at the south end of CP4, and not much has changed here. Moving north to this canal relocation, we can see that not much has changed and there is still water in the canal. Moving further north, however, at this north-south canal relocation, we can see some significant progress has been made. On the left, you can see the old imagery, and as we move to the right, boom. Embankment is now crossing the future canal alignment, and the canal edges have been paved with concrete. This means that this canal relocation is nearly done at this point, and they just need to finish up these parts near the north and south ends. Huge news here, which means that the number of right-of-way interruptions are near zero now. Just that previously mentioned canal relocation that has not started yet. Moving north to Avenue 24, you can see that some work is being done, likely just space for the right-of-way. Continuing further north, on the north side of the Deer Creek Viaduct, we can see some of this land is being bulldozed and removing all the grasses, which means that right-of-way is starting work. That's good news. South of Angiola, we can see that this right-of-way that we started construction on a couple months ago is now moving along quite nicely. They've started clearing this land, which is really good news. They will have to relocate this canal here, and I suspect that will be happening in the coming months to the next year as the new right-of-way gets added on the south here. This is entirely dependent on land acquisition though, so we have yet to see what that timeline will look like. As well as right here, where you can see that they've started bulldozing through a former road alignment here on the south side of Angiola. More canal relocation work is ongoing on the north side of Avenue 120. This is to give room for the grade separation to occur and to make sure that the right-of-way is not encroached on. Here we can see some land clearing ongoing near this track road. And moving further north, we can see some formwork going up near some of these bridge sections that tub girders are going to be installed on. You can see that as there is some orange coloration here. The sweet canal relocation is not as far along as the one in CP4. As you can see, they don't have the concrete edge walls of the canal finished yet. I suspect that's going to need this canal drained, and that's going to take a while. And now as we move even further north, we can see that the temporary road realignment for the south SR43 overcrossing is now fully open to traffic and traffic has been rerouted onto it. This is good news as the Cross Creek Viaduct, which is going to be built right over here where the cloud cover starts, will transition to an at grade alignment here and go underneath a four lane viaduct for SR43. We should eventually start seeing them remove the road here once construction moves further along. I've had to switch to a different date. This is November 17th now, as you can see that this November 22nd imagery has cloud coverage, which obviously blocks our view. But here at the north SR43 overcrossing, you can see that the road has been realigned and this white splotch right here is where a vehicle is, which means that this should theoretically be open to traffic. That means that we can start construction on both of these overcrossings very soon, or they have already started construction now. Google Maps suggests that Jersey Avenue here is closed to traffic, which means that construction might already be underway here. The way this will be set up is there will be two parallel bridges here as SR43 gets upgraded to a four-lane divided highway, and Jersey Avenue will be closed on the east side of the high-speed rail alignment here. Here at the Hanford Viaduct, we can see that some more girders have been installed on the center section of the viaduct. If we compare it right here, you can see right in the middle here, there are potentially four more rows of girders that have been installed, which is good progress. And this short section of deck has been finished. As you can see, the concrete has now hardened enough to turn white. Other than that, not much progress has been made, and on the latest imagery, it is covered by clouds. I'm hoping that the Grangeville Boulevard section of this viaduct, redo that. I'm hoping that the Grangeville Boulevard viaduct is started soon, as that would symbolize the relocations of power lines right here are now completed. Moving further north here, we can see that these riverbeds are drained now, which suggests that construction work is going to start very soon on the supports for the bridges that cross them. This would be really good news as it means that we are finally starting work on the Dutch John Cut and Coal Slough viaducts. Moving back to the November 22nd imagery, 
Here at the Caneo Viaduct, we can see that this red waterproof membrane layer has been installed where the future viaduct section will transition to girders. This signifies that they are going to be pausing work on that for a little while, or they have already started work and are just preparing for a rainy season. It is an El Nino year again, which means that California will be getting more rain than usual. So expect some more construction delays as a result and potentially some more flooding. We can see some ongoing relocation work here for this canal as they prepare for the high-speed rail and BNSF right-of-way to cross the newly relocated canal. BNSF will be relocated to the east of this alignment here, and high-speed rail will, will occupy the current BNSF alignment. You can see here that the extent of the new relocation is where this brown bulldozed line is, and in the near future, we should see Nebraska Avenue start some clearing work here, but the utilities are likely not completed, nor is the land acquisition. So we might have to wait a little while for this. It appears that based on this dark spot here, that there might be some supports installed at Floral Avenue here. This would signify that bridge construction is rapidly increasing in pace and would signify that we are nearing the halfway point of the completion of the structure. Moving forward to Manning Avenue, we can see that some land has been bulldozed around the future BNSF trackage, which is what this gray area is. Hopefully, we should see these tracks relocated to the east very soon. And I would expect that it would probably be in conjunction with the road being closed for construction and for the new grade separation to be built. But we have yet to see on that. Now we move further north, and the authority confirmed in the latest fall construction update that construction work has begun on the Central Avenue grade separation. This is good news as it means that we should have even less of a gap. This means that we should have even fewer gaps on the right of way here, which is great for when rails start being delivered within the next year or two. Continued work is ongoing at the Church Avenue grade separation. More bulldozing can be seen here as they prepare to build the embankments for the viaduct. This area is going to need significant reconfigurations as I believe the intersection might have to be lifted by a few feet in order to keep the slope up to the bridge deck reasonable, but we'll have to see. This is going to be a fairly long grade separation with two separate bridges, one crossing the UP tracks, which is the one on the left, and one crossing the BNSF tracks on the right, and an incline all the way up to this bridge area from this road going north-south here next to the BNSF tracks. And moving even further north, we have a cool new update. Veterans Boulevard Interchange and Viaduct is now fully open to traffic. As of right now, the Golden State Boulevard relocation is not fully ready, the section between Barstow Avenue and the former Golden State Boulevard alignment is not yet ready, and the Authority's Construction Updates channel suggests that it should be complete by the middle of December. This would be good news, as that would mean that this entire section between Barstow Avenue and where the road connects to the former route right here is now ready for construction to begin, which also means that an intrusion protection barrier wall can start being constructed here. With this interchange open, it means that traffic can now be rerouted from Herndon Avenue onto Veterans Boulevard, and it's no longer necessary to have this road crossing open, as vehicles can still cross the tracks, which means that the Herndon Avenue grade separation can start work. This would fill a large gap in the right-of-way that is currently missing from the San Joaquin River pergola on the south side to the Veterans Boulevard interchange. This is about 40 feet above grade, and they need to transition to at grade. So what will happen is Herndon Avenue will be put underground a new grade separation will be constructed at the UP tracks, putting the road underneath, and the intersection between Herndon and Golden State Boulevard will be moved back to where you can see this dirt line going. This will make some room for the grade separation to start construction, and it will mean that this entire section of roadway is now open for right-of-way construction. Coming next year, as I move back to November 17th imagery, the Shaw Avenue grade separation should start. You can see that the land has been cleared most of the way around, and once that is complete, the road can be finally moved all the way over. This will open up an entire section of roadway between just north of McKinley Avenue all the way north to Avenue 17 in Madera County. This is huge as the Avenue 9 grade separation is finally open to traffic as of a few weeks ago, which closes another major gap. From the High Speed Rail Authority's latest fall construction update, it is clear that construction work has begun on the grade separation as some of the piers formwork has been installed. Other than that, that wraps up our Sentinel 2 update. Let's get on to today's video topic. Let's get started with phase two. Now, there are two sections of phase two. Phase two north, which is the section between Merced and Sacramento, and phase two south, which is the section between LA and San Diego. I'm gonna start on phase two north, as that's likely going to be the first section to be constructed, as it is the cheapest. This section starts in downtown Merced, where, as I discussed the last time, 
the Merced Station will be, between R and O streets. This map is slightly outdated as it shows downtown Merced Station as being between J Street and G Street, but we just are going to reference it as the R Street Station. So moving north from Merced Station, the high-speed rail alignment will cross underneath SR99, and it will continue following the Union Pacific Railroad alignment, passing by Atwater, Livingston, Turlock, Ceres, and Modesto, where it will have another station. Now, none of these are set in stone yet. This is just an initial route, and the exact alignment shown on here is probably not going to be the final alignment, as it hasn't even been planned out environmentally. That is what some of the money from the future federal-state partnership grants from the federal government will go to, is completing the design for everything between San Francisco and Anaheim so that it can just get funded and start construction. Now, the Modesto station will here be between J and I Street and will likely to extend to K and H Street. Now, as with all stations in the Central Valley, I severely hope, I seriously hope that these cities have a plan for rapid transit dedicated connections at these stations to reduce the amount of vehicles on the roads in these cities. But we'll have to see in the future. As we move from north from this, the high-speed rail alignment overlaps with 8th Street, continues north under SR99 again, and through this industrial park along Brink Avenue, where it continues under Beckwith Road, Dakota Avenue, and Murphy Road, and it will also cross this park here. I would have to assume that this is going to be designed around, and the high-speed rail alignment will move Union Pacific closer to Salida Boulevard, as, of course, destroying a park is definitely not going to be very popular with the locals. The high-speed rail authority has been pretty good about this so far, as far as I understand, where even with some of their weird designs in the older sections, they've managed to respect what the locals' interests are in those areas. They do have a lot of community meetings to gauge community interest and opinion on certain subjects. Now, as we move through Salida, or Salida, I'm not sure, feel free to tell me which pronunciation is correct in the comments, as you did with Manteca, which I improperly pronounced as Manteca, a few months ago. Thank you for that. And it continues north along Elm Street, Whitestone Way, and then under Hammett Road. It continues following State Route 99 and the Union Pacific right-of-way as it goes under 2nd Street, Fulton Avenue, and Jack Tone Road. We keep going north here, and as you can see, these are some really old GIS drawings as these lines don't even overlap, but we're going to work with what we've got. This continues north and follows State Route 99, it seems, going to the north underneath Stockton Airport to a Stockton station on the far east side. I would have preferred it to go through the city of Stockton, but from what I understand, there isn't a lot of space here to begin with. Moving further north, it continues following State Route 99 until it goes along this right-of-way over here, which, according to ArcGIS, is Central California Traction. It then makes a left-hand curve, crosses Woodbridge Road and State Route 99 on an angle, and meets up with the Union Pacific right-of-way again, where it will follow it once again. This continues north for a while, crossing Dry Creek here, and going through the city of Galt. Feel free to correct my pronunciations at any point. We continue following the Union Pacific right-of-way, crossing these intermittent lakes, crossing under State Route 99 again, near Eschinger Road, and passing through the middle of Elk Grove. This continues along the Union Pacific right-of-way through Florin, where we continue going north, and will eventually go next to the current Siemens Florin facility. The Siemens Florin facility is right here, on the north side of Florin, between French Road and Reese Road, on the north side of Gerber Road. If the high-speed rail authority chooses Siemens as their train set provider, this will be invaluable, as Siemens will have direct access to the high-speed rail authority's trackage. This should save some significant costs when delivering trains, as you no longer have to deal with Union Pacific shipping these locomotives. Let's continue further north, crossing at Fruit Ridge Road and Power Inn Road, following along Railroad Avenue here, over 14th, and then crossing under US 50. It then crosses Folsom Boulevard, follows College Town Drive, and then will likely go over or under J Street here. Then it will cross H Street, continue following the UP right-of-way, where it will cross this Y at an angle, and then cross this, what seems to probably be a small subdivision, going through this area, and finally ending up at Sacramento Station. Now we can move on to Phase South. Now, these drawings are outdated, as over the last few years, the designs have changed, and these have not been updated since likely 2019, potentially even earlier. Now, with the old high-speed rail alignment, tracks were supposed to go straight through here and connect up on the other side of the river here, which would have been incredibly expensive, and I'm glad that they value-engineered that stuff out of it. But we can see roughly where these tracks would come from. Now, one option 
is tracks crossing here through Lincoln Heights, ending up crossing Mission Junction and connecting to the high and connecting to the existing trackage here. This will likely be different. I would expect that with these new alignments, the tracks would cross here on its own bridge, cross the LA River, go back down to ground level or continue on a viaduct above these tracks, and then meet up with these alignments here next to Valley Boulevard. This assumes that they're going to have a run-through station layout. On the other side, I would expect the tracks to come out here. As it follows Commercial Street, it makes a left-hand curve on a viaduct above State Route 101, above US 101 again, continuing along Mission Road, and then making the curve and following Valley Boulevard once again. Some alternative designs that I do not think will ever happen are this alignment here, which crosses through Boyle Heights again. I severely doubt that any of these alignments here will ever be approved as Boyle Heights, as it is, is already severely disconnected as a result of all of these freeways being bulldozed through it. And I don't think the authority or the state would ever have the ability to do that again. The only alignment that I think is even remotely possible, with the exception of those, is potentially this one here, where it crosses over the 10, 60, 5, and 101 interchange here, making a curve through this neighborhood and following the 60. This is a fairly reasonable assumption, but that would mean that there is no connection on this side. The other one that's potentially possible is this straight line overcrossing of the river, which is more reasonable as it doesn't cut through Boyle Heights, but also is probably impossible due to the current angle of these tracks now. So my theory is there's going to be either two entrances and exits, one along these tracks along Alhambra Avenue, and the tracks along Mission Road being a run-through station playout, just like it's being designed as now, or it will be one of these southern alignments where there is a long sweeping curve where it no longer has to worry about that. I would have to imagine that this one on the south would be the easiest to operate as trains running through to San Diego from north would have to stop at LA Union Station and back out if any of these northern alignments were chosen. And any southern alignments here would cause some severe bottlenecking based on the way that the bridges are being laid out. As we move on, high-speed rail alignment will follow the 10 on the north side have a station at the El Monte Transit Center potentially, and continue following the 10, where both alignments will meet at West Covina. With the southern alignment, as I showed before, it'll follow the 60, where it will continue north on the west side of the San Gabriel River, where it will once again cross over the 605 and meet up with the other alignment as shown before. East of West Covina, it'll follow the 10, cross through the San Jose Hills here, and follow along the 71 briefly, where it will either follow Holt Avenue or West First Street. There are two options here. The Holt option for Pomona or the Metrolink side Pomona slash Amtrak. I feel like the first option here would be the most likely as it follows existing rail right of ways, but it really depends on what the authority will have money for in the future. I personally don't have a preference for either one. I'm not particularly familiar with this area though, so feel free to tell me if there's any option that you think would be smarter. Later on, once this crosses Euclid Avenue, the tracks will merge towards each other and end up on the south side of these Union Pacific tracks along Airport Drive and have an Ontario International Airport station. At this point, there are three different routings that are possible. There's an option that follows BNSF all the way until the city of San Bernardino, where it will make a loop through these industrial areas, follow the Santa Ana River, and then meet up at La Cadena Drive. The second option is the option that follows the Union Pacific right-of-way and through the median of the 10 to the county of San Bernardino option. I personally think this is a weird and not very useful option because it pretty much spits you out in the middle of nowhere. But it's likely the most compatible with Brightline West, which I will get onto in a future video, where it then curves starting right on the east side of Riverside Avenue, crossing through what is likely an open pit mine over here, and then meeting up at La Cadena Drive again. Moving south, it follows along Chicago Avenue and then the 215, where it will continue south along the 215, following the existing old Highway 215 alignment, where it will continue south to March Air Reserve Base. I potentially think this is a good option, as people wanting to get to the Air Reserve Base have an additional option other than vehicles to get there, and it could help connect more people. This continues south, following along Harville and Webster Avenue, before making a curve along Quigley Lane and meeting up with the 215 again. This continues on a sweeping curve back along the 215 as it continues south through Sun City. This continues all the way south until right by the Sierra Vista Plaza on the south side of Los Alamos Road, where there will potentially be a Murrieta slash I-215 station option. And then 
it'll follow the 215 where it meets the 15 here and continue south. Now let's look at the third option. Making a southbound turn near East Airport Drive, it crosses through this industrial area before crossing the 15 and ending up on the east side. It then crosses the 60, following the 215 south, where it then splits off when it crosses the 91 and follows its own right of way. This crosses a river valley in Temescal Wash and Temescal Canyon, where it continues to near the crossings at Corona where there will be a Corona station option. I think this is a potentially interesting idea, but it's very far from the city of Corona. I feel like a station option here at East 6th Street might be a little bit better here, as it's closer to the center of the city and is likely closer to the majority of people. Feel free to tell me if that's wrong though. They'll then cross Cajalco Road and then cross the Starlight Cinemas at Dos Lagos, where it meets up with the 15 again. This continues south, where it splits off near Lawson Road and follows its own right of way through the Temescal Wash again. This continues for a while, where it crosses the 15 once again near Averhill and Lake Street, goes through a tunnel likely right here through these hills, and then continues along the highway. And then crosses under some more mountains before passing by Lake Elsinore City Center, not the actual city center, but the location called the city center at Railroad Canyon Road, following the 15 still, where there will be a Murrieta I-15 station option closer to the city between the high school and Mulligan's Family Fun Center. This will then cross the I-15 right-of-way and follow Monroe Avenue before meeting up with the right-of-way that was shown before. At this point, we're at Winchester Road, and as we continue south, the right-of-way will cross through Tower Plaza through the middle of the parking lot, and then and then meet at I-15 again. This continues where it goes through the side of a hill, which is strange to me as I'm more familiar with this than any other area, and then crosses into San Diego County. I would expect that this curve would be adjusted and made a little bit more wide, but this might be the most reasonable option. This continues by the city of Rainbow, goes through Stewart Canyon, and then follows 15 before entering into a hill on the south side of the 76. Moving further south, this crosses through and above Gopher Canyon Road, following along here, making an S-curve and entering along Metcalf Street and having a station right next to the Spritter Depot in Escondido. This will continue further south, where it will once again follow the I-15 right-of-way on the east side, and then there are some more alternatives. The east alternative continues in a straight line across Lake Hodges, where it then crosses over Pomerado Road through this country club, which I don't think will bode well for the possibility of this alignment being constructed and then through the suburb, where it will then cross underneath this hill here, across another country club, and then follow back and meet up on the east side of the 15 alignment at Carmel Mountain Road. What I think is most likely here is the right-of-way will follow I-15, cross here, follow I-15 more, continue following I-15, and then meet up with that other alignment there, where it then crosses the 56. Here, it'll continue following the 15 until it reaches Mira Mesa Boulevard, where it will then cross underneath Miramar College, and follow through Carroll Canyon. I don't find this entirely likely. This seems to be a very expensive right-of-way. This right-of-way continues through what is currently an open pit mine underneath an industrial park, crossing the coaster tracks here, going through several tunnels, and then meeting up here at UTC Mall. I find this alignment to be a little bit strange as it's very obviously an old outdated map as the new UTC trolley station fits in right about here, but we'll have to see. As is everything discussed today, this is all up in the air. This continues where it will cross under Via Mallorca, then Gilman, fall under this hill, and then make a curve underneath 5 or over 5 and meet on the east side of 5 on the south side of the 52 interchange. I very much don't think this is going to be very possible just based on the way that everything is set up here, so take this with a grain of salt. This right-of-way will then continue following 5 where it will cross above Santa Fe Street, go over Rose Creek here, and then continue along the current BNSF slash trolley tracks. There's not a lot of space left here as the trolley has built its own right-of-way, but we'll have to see how this plays out. This continues crossing Tecolote Road, Friars Road, and then meeting here at Old Town. As you can see here, there's some right-of-way showing, and I'll get to that in a moment. Then all alignments continue south along the existing BNSF tracks, and then following five, where there's then going to potentially be a station at San Diego International Airport, but I'll get to that in a moment. Let's move back to the other alignment. Instead of crossing to the west and going under La Jolla, this other alignment follows 15 south. I think this is a far more likely alignment as there's a significantly larger amount of space along this alignment. This continues down 15 until it reaches the 163 interchange where it crosses the 163 and ends up on the west side. There's a lot of space here as this is mainly industrial and commercial. It crosses the 805 here, following the 163 still, probably on a viaduct or underground where it then goes down the hill here, stays on the east side, and crosses over the 163 here, 
and ends up on the north side of Hotel Circle. This is physically impossible now as a large residential development has been built here. So this will have to be moved southwards a bit. It then follows Hotel Circle North, crossing over a large number of baseball fields here, and then crossing over Morena Boulevard, eight crossing over the Caltrans District 11 office parking lot, over the railroad tracks. This will have to be elevated as these tracks are only slightly above sea level and oftentimes Mission Valley gets flooded. So there's no way that they could ever get approved building a structure like this for that amount of money in a flood zone. So this will have to be very high in the air. Over I-5 and then on the west side of I-5 continuing along. I personally know that the San Diego International Airport giant transfer station is no longer going to happen. The city realized that it was infeasible to do so. What the San Diego city is going to do is they are going to build either an automated people mover or a trolley extension to the airport from Santa Fe Depot here. So what I think is going to happen is that High Speed Rail is going to share tracks into downtown and have dedicated platforms at Santa Fe Depot here. That concludes the High Speed Rail Phase 2 South overview. Now let me talk about the far future. There is going to be a second Transbay tube, this time for conventional rail and BART, crossing the bay, which I will get to in a future video. And I believe that this will result in a new high speed rail alignment that will get you from San Francisco to Sacramento without having to go south to Merced. Currently, the route that you would take is you'd get on the Capitol Corridor in Sacramento and you'd get off the train at Oakland, Jack London Square. I think that that's a little bit limiting and the system could be a little bit more effective if a third phase is constructed from San Francisco to Sacramento following the existing right of way. So with the future project, Link 21, that I will discuss in a future video, they will cross the bay end up here on the east side of the bay following the existing Union Pacific tracks and potentially cross at a future bridge here at Carquina Strait, follow this existing trackage here for the California Northern, make a right turn here going through the valley where State Route 12 is, and then at the Fairfield Y here, it will make a north turn, probably straight line, and continue along these existing tracks where it will then cross the Sacramento River and meet up at the existing station. This will give you a effectively a big loop where you no longer have to travel south to go north or have to take the slower conventional Amtrak route to Sacramento. This could potentially result in significant time savings and allow for much cheaper housing for people wanting to get into San Francisco. Other than that, that should be it for today. Thank you guys for watching. In the next video, I will be talking about the Cross Valley Corridor. I briefly touched on it in the past, but this time I will be more specific and give some more details on it. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Feel free to join our Discord server. The link is down below. I do have a Patreon. That is also linked down below. Feel free to pitch in $5 a month. I'm not going to pressure anybody though. I don't want to put any of these advertisements at the beginning as I feel like pushing advertisements on people is not only irritating, but is not in the spirit of why I make videos. I do this to help inform people because I think that a lot of information is misunderstood about this project. Other than that, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time. Bye.